Awesome. So right about now, to naingia session ya Bible Expo. Umse mnamjua, vile anachomanga kila kitu wapa. I don't think kuna siku wa metoka hapa kama jangusha bomb. So, and we thank God for him. We thank God for him. Uh, so, tampigia makofi ya kikuja. Uh, Reverend Francis Omido. Praise God. Hallelujah. How does it feel? Being the last day, better is the end of a matter, isn't it? And today is going to be wonderful. It's, it's still chilly. It's a chilly morning. So please make yourself warm as we study God's word. Amen. I wanted to have some time to just worship, but the instrumentalists are gone. Wako happy, wajama. Walienda. Anyway, did you carry your Bible? Mm -hmm. You carried your Bible? Ah, thank you very much. Wapi mzito? Kuna mwingine hayuko? Ako area? Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Oh, kuna mwingine hayuko? Ah, kuna mmoja hayuko? Anakaa. Uko sawa? I told you yesterday that the place of prayer is a place of relationships. Building, growing in relationship. And sometimes we don't get the richness of prayer because we don't get to a place of prayer. We get a place of demand, of presentation of our shopping list. But we really don't get to a place where we pour our hearts because it is impossible to say that you have been a place of prayer and then you say you need somebody to talk to or you need somebody to pour your heart to. It just means that you didn't have the essence, the richness. You didn't experience the significance of prayer. Because when you have talked to a friend for one or two hours, Surely your life should be different. The way you feel about yourself, about the things that are happening around you, should be different. Hallelujah. So, apart from those, uh, the, the violence, because most of us, we learned yesterday, think that when you share, when you are screaming, then you are violent in prayer. No, you can't be violent. In fact, the most powerful decrees in government are given softly. When the president just stands and says, I want the minister of this to do this, he doesn't scream. Because that is the essence of power. But when you get to a place with God, when you are able to express yourself, the deepest, most personal feelings that you have, and the way you feel about him, and your anxieties and your fears and your challenges that means you've gotten to a place of intimacy with God hallelujah 
So I want you for a minute just to stand wherever you are. Just stand wherever you are. And these guys are worshipping with instruments. They are worshipping with the instruments. But we are verbalizing, we are putting what we are feeling from inside into words. And there is no formula. You know, when you meet your friend, you don't have an agenda. You don't say we are doing preliminaries, then this, then this, then AOB, then uh -uh. Your most intimate friend, you can start from anywhere. You can start from how you feel. You can start from what you're going through. You can start from the frustrations and the fears, the anxieties uh, that you have. Because you are in an intimate, less with him. Hallelujah. And we are going back to a generation of worship. The people who really know how to connect with God. Not the people who are noisy and busy in his presence. No, the people who are able to connect. Praise God. Nobody understands you like God. Not your friends. Not the one you are running to and was upping. No. He understands you more than anybody else. So just open your arm. Close your eyes right now. And just meditate on his goodness, his love. That he gave everything for you. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you, we love you, we praise you, Lord. You are greater than the greatest. You are mighty than the mightiest. He wants you to hear him tell him, you are all that I have, you are all that I am. You are my everything, O oh God. You satisfy every part of me. Oh, Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Thank you. 
Bless you, Jesus. thank you this morning that you have brought us here today in your presence and this week has been awesome starting from Sunday we've had wonderful sessions oh Lord and you have spoken to us that my sisters and my brothers came with different issues and burdens in their lives and the questions in their minds and you, you have used many people that you have brought here to speak to their hearts and their spirits they have felt awesome in some of the sessions not so awesome in others but they have made friends and interacted and we return every praise and glory to you we pray that their lives shall be transformed and all of us we shall come to the measure of the stature of Christ open our eyes to hear the truth in your word and that you shall cause us to walk in freedom because of the truth that is found in your word I receive every praise and every glory for this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. The worship pass on the instruments. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you very much. I appreciate. Now for the remaining time that I have, I'm going to share with you some truth uh, in God's word. I know we may not have time to go through everything that we wanted to in the book of Ephesians. Well, let me just see if I can tie it up with a, a truth in a section, a portion of the book of Ephesians and see if we are going to learn something. Give us uh, Ephesians 6, 6, 10. Um, 6, 10. But by now you might have noticed that Paul is very passionate about the people that he's writing to. And we have said that he wants them to know that they're important people. Uh, not just important because of um, who they are, but also because of who, whom they are. Uh, whose they are, that they belong to God, that God chose them before the foundations of the earth or the world in him so that they show forth his glory, that the glory of God is manifested through them. And that manifestation is not in the material of men, but is in the demonstration of the power of God. Paul says that my preaching, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, that my conversation among you was not of persuasive words of the tongues of men. He was saying that I want you uh, to know that my talking was not of eloquence 
or persuasive words, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, but it was demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith be not founded on the words of men, but on the power of God. So he wanted their faith not to be found by eloquence or quotes or wonderful uh, proverbs. He wanted their faith to be grounded on the power of God because the only difference that can uh, happen in your life is when the power of God interacts with your life because when you interact with the power of God, then your life is transformed. There is no one who comes at, in his presence and remains the same because you are influenced by the aroma of God, you are influenced by his presence. When Moses descended from the mountain, he came down, the children of Israel could not look at him because they said the glory of God was upon him, say, we will not talk to God, please talk to him on our behalf. And that glory was awesome because he was for, uh, changed, transfigured, if you will, like Jesus was on the mountain, the same mountain, he was transfigured. But now the writer of Hebrews says, but we look forward to a better glory, not a fading glory of Moses. Because as awesome as it was, Moses' glory was fading, but ours is abiding. We have an abiding glory. That our glory is not tied to events and activities and concerts. Our glory is abiding. Meaning that even after this conference, you shall abide in his glory. You'll be in that classroom, but you're abiding in glory. You'll be in that marketplace doing your business, but you're abiding in glory. We have an abiding, abiding glory. So he says, my word was, was not persuasive. Uh, in the same chapter, verse 14, he says that the, for the f foolish man understandeth not, or the carnal mind understandeth not the things of the Spirit, uh, for their foolishness to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See, I told you one time that um, when we were beginning that God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places, but uh, if they are in your machine and you don't have the right software, meaning that you cannot read the program, yeah. Have you ever opened a file and you can't open it? You see it. It is an attachment, isn't it? But you can't open it. Why? Not because he didn't send it to you, but because you didn't have the right software. So once you install in yourself the right software, you can access all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places that God has already ordained for you. So he says, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. You must have a discerning spirit to decipher the things of God, to get the things of God. Uh, the frequency must have some reception for it uh, to work. I'm waiting for Ephesians 6.10, because that's where we're going to read a couple of verses there, then I'm going to use that to... Uh, share a, a point or two, then we close. Ephesians 6, 6 verse 10. Read with me, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong, uh, be strong in the Lord. Do you remember the prayer we prayed? That God will sp sp strengthen you by his spirit in the inner man. Yeah? You remember? Said chapter 3, the Lord will strengthen you, uh, strengthen you by his spirit in the inner man. So we are talking about that the Lord, uh, would, the strength that you need to have is not the strength of men, the carnal strength, it's the strength of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Because the strength in the Lord sometimes doesn't look like strength. You see, Paul writes and says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, Though our outward man perishes, yet our inner man is renewed day by day. That means you might look outside and see somebody who is wearing down, but inside he's growing day by day. I wish you had that prayer that the inner man may be strengthened day by day. Say, so finally be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Huh? Put on, let's continue. It says, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the full armor of God, the, the arsenal of God. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand 
uh, against the wiles of the, it's important for you to understand the meaning of wiles here in this scripture. Wiles, uh, scriptures call it schemes. It, you know, the devil does not have real power. That's why the Bible says that he roams around uh, like a roaring lion, meaning he's not a roaring lion. He says he appears like an angel of light, meaning he's not an angel of light. He's using camouflage. He wears stuff to, to pump himself. I don't know if you've seen this, this, uh, this robotic clothes that you can wear and be big, isn't it? That's what the devil does. And he's using wiles. Wiles are schemes. He's playing with your mind. He's playing with your vision. That when you look, you see a big thing. You see an overwhelming thing. He says that you may be able to withstand the wiles. Not the power of the devil. The wiles, meaning the scheme. He's doing a mind game on you. He's telling you this is too difficult for you. And you cannot make it. Uh, at your age, you cannot survive. He's playing uh, with you, with your mind. Saying this is too tough for you. But saying the wiles that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we'll be looking at that to understand that the devil's power has been stripped. Uh, you remember, if we read Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, uh, it's, it says that the written code that was against us has been blotted, isn't it? Blotted. And verse 15 says that he has been stripped all the power that we ha have because Jesus stripped him of every power that he had. If you read the book of Job, because it's one of the earliest books ever written, actually the book of Job does not um, belong to the place where it is placed in your Bible. It is around Genesis chapter uh, 11, thereabout. It's a very early book. You remember when God, uh, the devil comes and complains about Job, he says, but you have surrounded him. I cannot touch him. Yeah? Meaning everything that happens to you is only permissible. You, rem you remember we read uh, Romans 12, it says the good, there is a good will, there is an acceptable will, there is a perfect will, there is a perfect will, permissible will. Uh, things that he permits to happen. So the wiles of the, the enemy is just to cause you because the enemy cannot enter your territory unless you allow him. So he plays minds on you until you open the gates for him to come in. And many of us have opened many gates. You remember Jesus says that the devil has, uh, has sought me, but he has nothing in me. That means, I, I don't know, uh, some of you are in school, I don't know if you've met a gadget called Geiger Muller counter. Have you? Have you? Anybody doing uh, geography or something? Or you dropped? You dropped, huh? But, but there, was, there, was, there was a tool that you'd, uh, if you wanted to check for the presence of certain minerals on the ground, before you dig them up, there is something you place on the surface. I, I think they still have them. You place on the surface and it's going to, to indicate something is underground, isn't it? Eh? So that is something that you, you can read and see, oh, there is something inside here before they start digging. So what, that is what the, the, uh, Jesus was saying, that he has placed the counter on you, but he's finding nothing. You see, the devil only corresponds to what is already inside of you. Because the book of James, the Bible tells us that a man is drawn out by his desires, isn't it? If there is no desire in you, there is no place for the enemy. Because the enemy only corresponds, sends you things that correspond to what is already inside of you. So he's using wiles. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of... For we wrestle not, look at that scripture, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So your enemy is not that friend of yours. He's not that roommate. He's not even your parent. Eh? You know, some of us come to a conference with uh, the greatest enemy being our mother or our father. Hmm? That is not the greatest enemy, that friend of yours. No, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against 
principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It would be important for you to remember that we read earlier, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, he says that unto now the principalities and powers might be known the manifold wisdom of God by the church. Do you remember us reading that? Now we are wrestling against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, yet God has told us that he wants his power to be known to principalities and powers through us. Meaning that whatever it is he's mentioning here, God has already given us power to overcome. Hallelujah. But you find those are levels. They're, they are wicked. Uh, you know, every... When, when somebody says there is a stronghold, meaning something that has been built, a tower that has been built, there are principalities. You'd notice that God is not talking about uh, rituals, religious rituals. He's talking about government. Because a principality is a government. He's saying rulers, isn't it? Rulers is government. That means for you to win this war, you must get to a place of government to understand what government is and how government operates. That's why the centurion man said, you do not have to come to my house. I am a man and authority. I tell this servant, go, he goes. I tell the other one, come, he comes. Just say a word. Because I know how authority operates. You understand? Once you understand how authority operates, authority operates under legitimacy. You cannot have authority if you don't have legitimacy. That's why governments, if they, it is not clear that they want uh, votes clearly, they must look for legitimacy. They must seek for the opposition uh, people to come in and join with them to give them what we call legitimacy. So he says you fight, we're fighting or we are wrestling. We are wrestling against principalities and powers and rulers. Those are levels of government. And you grow in authority. You grow in authority. You grow in levels. There are levels. You grow in levels. That's why there are people who can meet a chief or a, 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 a principal chief, or what do they call them? Senior chief, eh? the bigger chief. The senior chief, then there is, I don't know how their hierarchy is nowadays. There's commissioner nowadays. Commissioner, county commissioner, whatever commissioner, sub-county, like that, like that as you go. So there are levels, isn't it? And the levels in Alingana na ile authority ambayo unayo. You cannot command an authority that you don't have, even by screaming. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And you are going to see how you get that authority because it's the armor. When God explains the armor of God, he's going to tell us how we are able to clothe ourselves. So the, those are principalities and powers. There is a scripture in uh, 1 Corinthians, is it 15, verse 40? 40. Let, let's, let's see what it says. 40. 1 Corinthians 15. Ah. Now read with me this. What does it say? Hey, are those very difficult terms? You know what celestial is? Uh, guys, do you know what celestial is? Eh? Well, I just I'm gonna see it at Utaki Kuelewa Bible. Ni maneno, sinjio. Ni terms in Atomeka. Do you know what terrestrial bodies are? Eh? What about terrestrial? Uh, we are meant to say here amplified. They are heavenly, otherwise called. Ah ah. Ile term to litumia ni gani? Don't run away from it. Love words, love words. They will love you back. All right. 40, there are heavenly bodies, sun, moon, and stars, and earthly bodies, otherwise called. Mm -hmm. Humans, animals, and plants, but the glory and the beauty of the heavenly is one kind, and the glory of the earthly is. 
that the glory of celestial is different from the glory of the terrestrial. Isn't it? Verse 41. There is a glory and beauty of... Hey, you're reading with me. There's a glory and a beauty of... Another glory of... Another... The stars and one star differs from another in glory and brilliance. Are you seeing? There are levels. That there is a glory of the sun, there's a glory of the moon, there's a glory of the sun, of the stars. But even in the stars, one star differs in glory with another. Those are levels. So, as you grow in, a, in, in, in your Christianity, you must grow in level, not activity. Most of us think that now that unajua last year nilikuwa na serve kama kwa ministry moja, sasa ina serve nne, sasa nime grow. How do grow? You have just become busy. Yeah? Grow in level. Grow in power. Grow in authority. Hmm? Because you can be very active yet very powerless. Now let's read verse, uh, where were we? Ephesians chapter 6 verse. Hmm? I only have seven minutes, so let me explain this. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That you may be able to stand and having done all to stand. You see, the Bible does not, is not repetitive. There is a point. That you stand and having done all to stand. Because there are people who do all but fail to stand. Huh? Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Withstand it means fighting, isn't it? But after the battle, you remain standing. Because there are people who fall after the battle. Huh? We shall put a mutu ambaye amestaimili so much until she's just finished like this. Eh? All the pressures, all the words she has just rejected, all those or funny, funny things in, in school, paka memaliza. Sasa school ya nakana ngoja exam. Poof. You know, you have gone through too much. Why are you losing just when you are just about the corner? Because you should be able to withstand and after all to do what? To stand. That you may remain standing. Because there are battles that leave you fallen. Huh? Umeshinda lakini, it has left you down. They, you are a wreck. But the Bible is telling us that you'll be able to withstand the words of the devil the, and oh, the fighting principalities and powers that after you have done that, you remain standing. Wow. Now let's continue the next one. Stand there for having your loins got about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand ye there for... That your loins, loins, that is very important because if you notice your loins, the, true, the belt is what keeps everything together. You know that the soldiers used to put something on like this, but what held everything, the, the, the sword, the, the, the trousers, the whatever, everything is held by the truth. That's why truth is very important. So when we are talking about this warfare, remember I said we are fighting principalities and powers. But if you find that he says now, guard your loins with the truth, this is, this is not a prayer closet. Now you are in the marketplace. How you win this war is not when you come to church. How you win this war is when you are in the field. Can I tell you how you win the war? When somebody calls you and asks you, where are you? And you've not even left your house and you say, I am about the corner. That's how you are losing the war. Not that you are not prayerful. Uh -uh. But when it matters most, you don't guard your loins. So maybe you reduce your, 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 your prayer mantras, maybe from four hours to just 30 minutes. Eh? And go out and practice those, those 30 minutes. Because where we win the war is not when we come for the Kesha. Uh -uh. Where we win the war is on the field. How are you putting your spiritual armor 
Where is the spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare does not happen here. You don't say, now let's go on Friday and do spiritual warfare. No. Spiritual warfare is done in school, in your college. When somebody is asked, eh, did, you, did, did you finish this assignment? And you know you didn't do it. You say, no, I didn't do it. Hmm? Why are you over speeding? He says, no, I was not over. That's when you're winning. That's how spiritual warfare is fought. In the place where the action is. But you don't say, oh, let me just uh, koroga koroga like this and then I'll go back and say, but my father, my father, my father, my God, please save your energy. Save your energy. says those who love me obey my commandments, obey my teachings. So that time when that lecturer is asking you, is this your work? You say, this is my work. Huh? Or I don't understand. When you're giving somebody else to write for you your assignments, that is how you are losing the war. It's not that you are not careful. Hmm? Don't say, oh, this week I want to fast and pray so that now I can be powerful. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You better eat. Just eat. Because hmm? you're missing too much for nothing. But when you're on the field eh, and he has given you some work and you go and grapple with that work until you get it. You see, let, let me share with you something that I've grappled with for some time. And th these are uh, physical realities. One of the things that I'm still grappling with is what we are calling academic writing. Today. Because if you are in a business, for example, of academic writing, have you ever asked you, ask yourself what you are doing? Because I say I have a thesis, I need written. Then I give you the money, you write for me. Hmm? It's good business, isn't it? You are getting money, but seriously? Huh? The ethical side of it? Is that my work or your work? Huh? Hey, guys, don't pretend you don't talk, because I see you. And I, uh, over lunch time and break time, we, eh? I see you. Eh? How loud you are. Huh? There are things that we do, you see, you see, it's good business. And maybe you stand before people and train them about, eh? You, you can write papers for people. They pay you a lot of money. But... Or you are that guy that helps people in class when they do not understand the mathematics because God has blessed you with arithmetic brain. So you support people. assignment. <laughs> so the place when you are asked did, did you, what time did you leave the conference? Do you know what is happening to you? God has placed you in a place to wear, to put on the full armor of God. It is not the, the conference where you are coming from. Now that is when you put on the, I want to put on the belt of truth and say, I came there at six o'clock, but I delayed with my friends. You don't say, oh, Pashi, I'm to release to Sai, Pashi, I'm to actually Sai, with a straight face. So if you have truth guarding you, you are, and let me tell you something, truth is not easy. Some of us teach that integrity is the key to success. When you have integrity, you are going to be successful. When you have integrity, you are going to pass your exams. But do you know integrity can lead you to jail? Do you know integrity can cause you to fail exams? Huh? Many of us want integrity as long as it's a pathway to a good thing. But integrity can cause you to miss friends. Are you still ready to pay the price? Truth, truth can cause you <laughs> to be a laughing stock. Hmm? There are people today who testify about, hey, God, help the police, whatever, whatever, kumbe ulidanganya. Now, Lisa, you were going beyond the speed limit, right? Ah, sikuwe kwa naenda uko. Na wewe ni mubiri sayo. 
Hmm? Or if you want to find your way out, you know, uh, and you give it even as a testimony. Come on, uh, as a pastor here, of course, we know so many people here who are positioned people who are your friends that you just can call and they get you out of something. Useme, nilikuwa jogo road, nikasimamishwa, nime over speed, unaita. Kwa sababu unajua mshirika kwa hapa, ni polisi senior fal, mahali unakol. Niko hapa, uh, please in idea. Seriously. Why do, and you're praying for the nation. And you're praying for the law of the country. And you're praying that God will progress you. Why don't you just face the consequence? And I'm telling you because I've been in cells for very many times. Very many times. I had people to call, but I didn't. The last time we were, we were getting to Kamkunji, I didn't see this girl coming to the, you know, the pedestrian crossing. I didn't see. So, shoop! Palembele. Says, boss, how do you mama, Peter? I said, I'm going to check. I checked, by the way, she was there. I said, I'm going to Then we were like 15 people. 15. Then one by one, Wanasonga kando, anarudi, anaingia gari, anayenda. One by one, wanasonga kando, na madam, wanarudi, anaingia gari. Eh, hey, I'm wondering, eh. Hey. Kumbe is just an interview and then we go. <laughs> then he comes and says, you see, uh, unataka tufanya aje ni Friday, na Friday na kuanga technical. Sunajua so, Friday ni technical kwa nini? Unaweza kama paka Monday. So he says, <coughs> Tumekuwa tunafanya 3,000, 3,000. Sasa. Sema, sema there are two things. You see, makosa nimekubali, nimefanya. So you either, if you forgive me, you'll just say go. Come and I'll forgive you. Nasema, let's go to court. And I'm ready to do that. Say, well, we bus tour 1,000. Wende kwa sababu unasumbua. Say, it's not money that I don't have. It's just that, and in fact, I told that lady, I want you, when you come on Sunday to church, I can be able to preach this word, Nauskia. Isn't it? So we go to the, we go to the cell. And that cell, there is no toilet, there is no nothing. People have just, you know, spent themselves there. You take some of these privileges. Eh? They have just spent there. Now, I'm a maji, so I'm because I'm a toa shu, I'm a you, you understand? Have you noticed in life that some, some of the conditions that come to your life, some people around you think that you are the same? Because vijana tumepatikana now pale, sasa we are the, we are, we are the same. Eh? Ah, mazee tumekuja hapa mara mingi, umetoka wapi? Yani, they are thinking that we are in the same. That's how some of you are. Tushida tushida tumekupata katika maisha. So, Friends, you are the same. You are not the same. You are just there temporarily. You are shida ni yamuda. You are shida ni yamuda. So, yes. <laughs> so people are busy calling, and that guy didn't take our phones. He, usually, he needs to take away our phones, but he didn't because he wanted us to be calling. So people are calling, nitumie sotano, nitumie nini. And then we were like 20 or so. Ambao anapereko kotini. In a short while, we were just five. Because when Guinea, the phones really bear fruit. 1,000, 2,000. And say, I'm going to go to the But you know, we went before court that day. We went with my neighbor like this. Hmm. You say you didn't. Give way to the pedestrian to cross. Guilty or not guilty, I say guilty as charged. You pay 5,000 shillings as uh, you are fined. I say thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So when I leave there, then uh, I have the key. I'm supposed just to go get the, the vehicle and go. But I go to the office and look for this lady who arrested me. Now I'm being Sante, Madam San. Sante, kwa sababu ni memalizana na koti. Sasa naenda nyumbani. That girl, you know, <laughs> that police woman could not believe it. He said, hey, sasa inamanisha, next time to go kushika, atuta kushika. Kasa babu, 
We, hakuna mtu anarudi hapa kusema asante. Are you seeing? I'm teaching you a simple truth that is going to change your life forever. Stop this claiming and uh, commanding prayer. Just speak truthfully. You understand? It is going to unlock great potential inside of you. But the problem is you speak very good religious words, but you are not living it. Why don't you just say the truth and suffer the consequences if they are there? Hii kazi si yangu. Hii assignment si yangu. Hii nini si yangu. Mimi ndio nimechelewa. Unajua kuna watu wakichelewa shule. Hmm? Na pia like mwalimu hakumuona nafanya hivi. Eh? Wangapi wako present? Wangapi walikuja mapema? Then you go to the CU to Nashrekea. Sema Ebu pasi nisaidie pasi si, si pati breakthrough utapata aje put on the full armor of god one of which is guard your loins with truth guard your loins with don't put on a face i don't like what you did it hurt me eh to see you ile cha it's good to see you praise god thank you Atafikiria kwamba mna you are good friends kumbe you are not you know you are not eh? I'm telling you one of the places to lead the difficult places is church because you don't know people really Aujui mtu vizuri because job ukifanya pale job secular atakwambia hii ni ujinga hii ni report gani umeleta hmm? Francis which kind of nonsense is this so your boss tells you that eh huh? In church you can't say that. Unaweza ambia joy ni ujinga. It is well oh man of God. The grace is sufficient. Na unajua kweli huyu sitawempatia job ingine. Hmm? Then unaona tu watu wanaku wanaku wanakuhepa. Unajuaje wamekukataa? Hawata hai kuambia ulimudhi. Ah. Ukikuja tu wanaona unakuja. Hmm? Wanakaa hivi. Even the people you used to talk to they won't tell you what hurt them but the mistake is that they will tell everybody else except you Hata ukiona Jackie hivyo ai mdomo yake ai shish toroka toroka But akikutana sasa unasema let me tell you by the way how you'll be frustrated Ukisikia hivyo you hate that Jackie with a passion you say kumbe ni mbaya hivyo Then saa hiyo vile mnamaliza kuongea tu Jackie anatokea. Huyu alikuwa anakuambia. Eh? Eh hey, Jackie, hi. Hi. <laughs> Or you have never witnessed that sometimes wewe unakosana na friend ya mtu na wanabaki wakiwa friends. Hujawahi jua? Dada anakuambia vitu mpaka unasema huyo ni mean, useless, sitawahi ongea naye. Sasa unamkata, simu yake unatoa nini? Then unakuja chaji unapata ndio wako pamoja. Unashindwa? Funny isn't it? 